Welcome to Build Up, the European Commission's portal for energy efficiency and renewable energy in buildings. Directly stemming from the Energy Performance of Buildings Directive, Build Up is the meeting place for everyone involved in making the European building and construction sector more energy efficient. Every month we focus on a topic that is key to making Europe's buildings as energy efficient as possible. Exploring that, you can find the latest content such as expert talks, webinars, case studies and more. From architects and engineers to academics and policy makers, we've got you covered. BuildUp brings together thousands of registered members to reap the benefit of Europe's collective intelligence on all aspects of energy efficiency and renewable energy in buildings. The BuildUp portal benefits from the expertise of our ambassadors. Drawn from industry and academia, the ambassadors bridge the gap between EU and national level and help shape our editorial content. Want to promote your work? BuildUp disseminates your research, projects and events through a variety of channels. Become a member to exchange knowledge with your peers. You can disseminate tools and resources, share good practices and consult open source publications. Join the discussion on social media and become part of the BuildUp community or subscribe to our newsletter to receive the latest news. However you participate, the BuildUp portal is here to inspire, inform and connect. BuildUp, the European portal for energy efficiency and renewable energy in buildings. Join the community for opportunities and updates. Good morning and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Katrien van der Kuilen and I'm a member of the BuildUp editorial team. It's a pleasure for BuildUp to host today's webinar and workshop event entitled Digital Twin Revolution in the Construction Sector, brought to you by the Cogito and BuildUp teams. This online workshop is split into four parts, during which the project specialists will present Cogito Digital Construction 4.0 toolbox, developed within the last three years in the frame of the Cogito project. This webinar is the final one of the series of five webinars titled Practical Tools for the Construction Sector in the Digital Twin, organized by the Cogito team and Builder platform. Before we begin, we invite and encourage you, the audience, to send us your questions or comments to the speakers throughout this session. To do so, please use the GoToWebinar question function. And these questions or comments will then be addressed at the end of the webinar. Finally, we would like to inform you that you will be able to find the recording of this workshop on the BuildUp portal and on our YouTube channel in the coming days, together with the presentation slides. The agenda for today's webinar is composed of four sessions. In the first session, Jorgos Yanakis, Project Manager at Hypertech, will present Project Innovations and Digital Tools. In the second session, Daniel Leep, Project Manager at RSRG, and Tobias Hanel, Project Manager at Ferrovial, zoom in on the demonstration sites and data collection for the German pilot in Munich and Spanish pilot in Murcia. In the third session, Jorgos Yanakis again focuses on digital tools and demonstration results, and then more specifically on the workflow management, quality control, and health and safety. In the fourth and last session, Daniel Leib and uh, Tomias Hanel will zoom in on the end user's feedback and the lessons, lessons learned from the German pilot in Munich and Spanish pilot in Murcia. We will then have some time at the end, as I mentioned before, to answer some questions from the public, moderated by us from BuildUp. And now, without further hesitation, we will move directly to the first session by Jorgos Yanakis. Jorgos, the floor is yours. Thanks, Catherine, for the introduction. So, uh, starting uh, our webinar today uh, with a brief project uh, overview. Um, okay. Um, our mission, uh, described by six uh, tangible objective, uh, objectives, has been to craft a digital twin platform as part of objective one, powered by an AI-driven quality control, workflow management, 
and health and safety applications uh, to be showcased uh, in the real construction projects and pave the way uh, for compliance with industry standards and uh, at the end uh, extensively disseminate uh, our achievements. Uh, to that direction, the Cogito uh, ecosystem was developed. Uh, in natural, uh, the Cogito ecosystem consists of uh, several components. First, uh, multi-source visual and IoT data preprocessing modules that uh, actually transform raw reality captured data into curated information stored in the digital print platform. The Cogito uh, Digital Print Platform, uh, DTP, that uh, uh, acts as the cornerstone of our system, uh, which actually manages data in adherence to the Cogito data model, ensuring this way uh, seamless semantic interoperability among uh, the various uh, digital print components. Uh, the workflow modeling simulation and management uh, tools uh, that monitor and uh, optimize uh, construction processes in terms of uh, cost and time. The quality control services uh, which retrieved, uh, retrieved both as designed and uh, as is uh, data from the digital print platform, uh, detecting defects and discrepancies, discrepancies using uh, advanced uh, AI algorithms. Health and safety applications that uh, generate uh, hazard uh, detections uh, a rule based on rules uh, and um, issues uh, timely warnings to construction workers and equipment uh, operations uh, operators sorry using real-time data and an application under the health and safety that educates uh, workers on uh, safety aspects last but not least our rich graphical user interfaces and supporting applications designed to empower decision makers through on-site or off-site visualization of uh, digital twin applications results. Fast forward uh, three and a half years and uh, we are thrilled to assert that uh, the consortium has successfully developed uh, 14 uh, digital tools, including uh, responsive multimodal user interfa interfaces, thoroughly presented uh, in 14 public deliverables that can be accessed uh, through our website or our community in Zenodo. Ten, manu uh, ten manuals have been uh, delivered uh, for the Cogito tools that provide the user interfaces and guidelines on how to collect uh, as planned and uh, as built uh, data for a construction project have been uh, consolidated uh, into a single document titled Guidelines for the As Planned and As Built uh, Data Acquisition. Following uh, an agile uh, project implementation approach, uh, the tools um, demonstration uh, and validation activities uh, started at the early stages of the project with uh, the pre-validation uh, cases, um, where uh, actually uh, with the purpose of identifying and uh, mitigating undesired uh, tool behaviors before uh, deployment in real-world scenarios. And to facilitate this early, uh, early uh, beta testing uh, process, the consortium first established uh, a school uh, pre-validation pilot, utilizing uh, the school sample project uh, provided uh, by Autodesk, uh, tailored uh, to the needs of the Cogito ecosystem. Um, this uh, preliminary testing phase uh, was followed by the release of uh, updated fully functional versions of all Cogito components that were qualified for uh, pre-validation in actual environments. Here, uh, the updated version of uh, the Cogito tools uh, were demonstrated in an actual medium-scale infrastructure construction site in Karlsruhe, Germany. Uh, but being uh, an outdoor uh, construction site, the Karlsruhe project was ideal for testing and evaluating uh, a GNSS RTK solution while not particularly suitable for Bluetooth for, for evaluation and validation of a Bluetooth low energy solution. Both solutions were offered for tracking um, the location of resources. And uh, when I'm saying resources, I'm referring to uh, heavy machinery, uh, equipment, uh, and uh, workers. Uh, the BLE solution uh, mainly targets uh, uh, indoor uh, environment, environments or areas uh, with uh, poor GNSS coverage. 
and uh, in absence of such an environment available at the Caltra project, uh, an operational tunnel provided uh, by another partner, Olympia Odos, was used uh, as a pre-validation environment. Uh, the pre-validation activities concluded uh, with uh, the release of uh, further enhanced versions of all uh, COVID components suitable for uh, demonstration uh, on our uh, linear infrastructure construction projects. Um, the first uh, is uh, in Munich and uh, the second uh, in uh, Murcia, Spain, where actually uh, Romberg, CESA, Railing Group and Ferrovial Construction respectively have been uh, collecting uh, or generating all the necessary data to enable uh, the Cogito toolset uh, validation and um, have been uh, efficiently uh, coordinating the demonstration activities on site. Uh, as we dive deeper into this uh, webinar, we'll shine a spotlight on our uh, whole tool set uh, as demonstrated uh, in those infrastructure projects, starting uh, with uh, the as planned and the as built uh, data collection procedures in both sites. Uh, Daniel Lieb uh, from uh, the railing, uh, Rombok Cersa Railing Group, and Tobias from Ferrovial will uh, present some highlights uh, for the German and Spanish pilot site, respectively. And uh, this concludes the first session. I think that, uh, Daniel, the floor is yours to present uh, some highlights for uh, the first pilot site. Okay, thank you, Georgas. So here you can see a little overview about our Munich site. <clears throat> the duration was uh, one and a half months, so from 12th of June until 30th of July. Uh, and the red mark, you can see our demo section. So one part was outside from the tunnel and one was inside. At the beginning, we started with the classical job to make the schedules with the Microsoft Planner export it as a CSV format and upload it to the DTP, so to the digital twin platform. And, and uh, before I switch to the next slide here, you can see the, the outside area where we made the, all of the tests, excluding Bluetooth, Georg was already told. So we have the tunnel for the Munich Pinal site, uh, I show it a little bit later. We used the um, laser scanner to make the point clouds and the 2D drawings also. For the CAD, we used the Revit tool. And for the outstage, we used um, auto photo maps. And this is the section where we tested, for example, the RTK system. We uploaded all this data as an IFC format. It was also important to use standards to the DTP. Here you can see our geolocation data collection through RTK real-time kinematic. So we used it for workers and for the machines. It's a little print where we can stick at the backside from a smartphone. Once is the base station that will send us the correction signal and the second one was the robot that was a small backpack to the smartphone and that gives us the possibility in combination with these three apps. So we try to use apps which are open on the market and not develop our own apps um to create our data in milliseconds to send it to the server so we have here the iot data pro pre-processing and send it then to the dtp again um, we just start to use the normal uh, geo sensors and the sensor logger gives us but also the possibility to use more sensors uh, from the IMU, so we can use also um, um, gyroscopic sensors and so on, which a smartphone has, but we just used also to, to get a lower size from the data, just used the RTK, the GPS data. 
Here you can see our scanner outside with a trolley and also inside with a Trimble scanner uh, to create the point clouds. At the bottom side you see images. So we, we took a lot of images um, to feed the algorithms that we are able to see the failure later with our next tool called Digitar. So uh, with our um, uh, picture creating process uh, we, we, we gave the algorithms uh, uh, enough of material that they can recognize ah, here is a screw missing or something like that. That was the part from the Munich. I will hand over to Tobias. Thank you, Daniel. I hope you can hear me well. So we'll now speak about Murcia site. So in a nutshell, um, Murcia site is quite a major infrastructure project. It's part of the even larger infrastructure project of the Mediterranean corridor. It consists uh, mainly in undergrounding of railway track, high-speed railway track, uh, mainly with cut and cover constructive procedure. Uh, the full project has a length of five kilometers divided into two sub projects so you can see on the pictures at the top uh, left an aerial view of the uh, construction of the main station building on the on the right you can see the map of the mediterranean corridor with the exact location of the murcia of murcia city then completely at the at the left you can see an aerial view of the selected demo section which was about uh, 300 meters long and at the bottom uh, you can see a comparison bef uh, between before and after as you can see before we had uh, the railway tracks quite near existing uh, houses or buildings and now you have a nice picture of the of the of the tunnel area so we will follow now in the in this presentation a similar structure to what Daniel just said. So first, as the first as planned data, very important for the for the validation of the tools was to provide a construction schedule. So it's important to know that the Gantt chart was uh, first created using Microsoft Project and then exported to Excel, and this enabled uploaded it uh, to the DTP in CSV format. Another fundamental as planned data is, of course, the BIM model. In case of Murcia, we had one unique main uh, BIM model that was created in Revit. But in order to make it uh, mature or usable for validation purposes, um, the 4D BIM model had to be adapted and, uh, and include all parameters, property sets, construction uh, zones, DTM, access roads, uh, also division uh, of the model in different subsection, also the ex extension, sorry, of the model to a 900 meters section. Uh, and of course, as you know, in the framework of Cogito project, we work with open IFC standards. So the B model was up, uh, uploaded as IFC, uh, in IFC format to the, to the DTP. Uh, then regarding the as built data, uh, first we have the resource location tracking uh, solutions. In case of Murcia, we tested uh, two solutions. First, the RTK GNSS solution that was already presented in, by Daniel and tested in Unix, so maybe I, I won't explain it again. Uh, here in Murcia, we, we also tested the Coupa Bluetooth low energy solution, which is kind of, as mentioned by Jorgo before, Kind of more designed for indoor uh, situations so we used it inside the tunnel uh, you can see on the picture so this solution requires more installing more devices so you can see here all the different elements so you have the locators that are the antenna you have the tags um, you have the mini computer and so on so on the picture you can see one antenna um, installed on one beam and on the at the bottom you can see the, the schematic view of the BLE network configuration uh, here it's important to bear in mind that uh, both uh, data coming from RTK GNSS or the Coupa solution 
uh, were integrated and uh, analyzed by the IoT data preprocessing module before being sent to upload it to the DTP, where the information, where all the data could be then used by other tools. And, and the final as built data um, important for the validation purposes, we have first the point clouds uh, needed for, for instance, geometry, uh, geometry quality uh, control. So we, we, have, we did a campaign of laser scanning with the Trimble SX12 um, hardware. You can see on the pictures, uh, the pictures on the top picture at the, on the right, uh, the superposition between the point cloud and the beam elements. And regarding the images needed to validate uh, other tools, uh, it's, you can see here some pictures that were taken from cracks in the concrete. Uh, it's important to bear in mind that uh, we could dire uh, directly take the pictures via digital tool and then upload it to the DTP or, um, or take some pictures and via VDPP uh, upload them to the DTP. So here are some uh, information about the Musia site. I will give the floor back to Jorgo. Thanks, uh, Tobias. Okay, so um, we uh, both uh, Daniel and uh, Tobias presented uh, the data acquisition process on the, and how we collect data to be processed by the digital twin applications. So uh, here I'll start presenting uh, some um, results that were cherry picked. For, for instance, we do have uh, a huge amount of data to be presented, but given the limited time that we have uh, to present some highlight highlights. I cherry picked some of the results uh, that could be uh, showcased uh, during uh, this uh, time frame. So, uh, starting with uh, the health and safety tools, uh, the health and safety tools uh, validation started uh, with uh, SafeCon AI. Uh, actually, uh, SafeCon AI acting uh, as a preventive uh, health and safety application uh, was uh, integrated with the digital twin uh, platform uh, through uh, API calls. So, uh, upon successful login into the user interface of uh, SafeCon AI, uh, initially um, uh, uh, SafeCon AI queried and retrieved uh, the BIM uh, models uh, in IFC format from uh, DTP, and then it enhanced uh, the model uh, in uh, two ways. First, by injecting, injecting the identified the environment features and hazard spaces into the BIM model, and uh, secondly, by integrating uh, the mitigation measures of uh, identified hazards. For example, placing uh, um, safeguards railings uh, on the B model. And some results uh, are depicted uh, on those uh, in, the, in these images. For example, for the outdating area that was presented uh, by Daniel, we see here how the model was enriched uh, with uh, safety zones and the placement of uh, some railings for uh, ensuring safety uh, on site. Um, deploying uh, the RTK, DNSS, uh, and or uh, the, BLA, the, the BLE solutions uh, on site, uh, the trajectory of uh, the workers and equipment uh, recorded uh, were used uh, as the main input uh, to uh, the proactive safety tool. Actually, the proactive safety tool managed to detect how many times workers uh, violate the boundaries and uh, went into the zones that uh, he or she was unauthorized uh, to enter. Um, uh, this is classified uh, as one of uh, as one type of uh, safety incidents, uh, which we call unauthorized uh, entry. Um, another uh, type of uh, safety incident uh, monitored uh, was the workers uh, that were in uh, the proximity to operating uh, construction equipment, uh, detected and uh, analyzed uh, based on uh, the trajectory of both workers and equipment. 
uh, the, trajector the trajectory is uh, recorded uh, were uh, also used for the generation of the training uh, scene in virtual safety. Uh, as I mentioned before, uh, this uh, um, application, the virtual safety, is for education purposes um, with regards to uh, safety aspects. And uh, as has shown uh, in uh, the image uh, on top, uh, the training scheme for workers uh, has been created using uh, the SafeB model generated by SafeCon AI. Uh, some Google uh, photorealistic uh, tiles for surroundings. Uh, static hazards, uh, hazards uh, integrated uh, into the BIM model and the dynamic hazards uh, integrated using the RTK GNSS uh, data. Uh, two training uh, scenarios uh, were created uh, based uh, on recorded uh, trajectory of the pedestrian worker and uh, equipment. And in the first uh, scenario, uh, simultaneous uh, tasks uh, were assigned to the users uh, who must perform the, um, independent uh, task uh, simultaneously uh, and collect uh, seven objects uh, and cross uh, the path of uh, the uh, equipment uh, several times. In, uh, another, in the other uh, training scenario, uh, the trainee takes uh, over the role of the pedestrian worker and uh, collaborates uh, with uh, the equipment uh, operator. Um, the, the sessions, the training sessions were recorded, uh, information was collected uh, and uh, results uh, were analyzed to provide some valuable insights that uh, assist uh, the education of uh, trainees. I'm moving now to uh, the quality control uh, toolset. The, demonstra the demonstration and validation activities for quality control tools uh, conducted in both sides uh, encompassed uh, the utilization of the visual data pre-processing uh, tool that uh, we call VDPP, as well as uh, the geometric uh, quality control and visual control uh, services. Uh, the validation activities of uh, VDPP um, were uh, mainly focused um, on receiving, uh, capturing, preparing, and enhancing uh, the raw visual uh, data, uh, like images, uh, videos, and point clouds acquired uh, on-site and uh, deliver uh, them to a digital twin uh, platform so that uh, relevant Cogito components can further process them. Uh, following uh, the prescribed steps we see uh, here, um, um, how actually uh, the data uh, were captured and uh, processed in uh, VDPP. Uh, link how we link uh, the uploaded images to specific uh, big beam elements uh, and process uh, those images, uh, for example, adjusting uh, contrast, brightness, and so on. And uh, then uh, assign them to specific uh, quality control tasks. Uh, to improve user experience, um, although not originally planned, uh, the VDPP uh, component was enhanced with uh, an IFC viewer. Uh, which is actually, as you see here, uh, which um, actually um, the main scope of this addition was to ease the process of uh, linking BIM elements uh, with uh, uploaded visual data in VDPP. Uh, with regards to the geometric QC, uh, actually the geometric QC uh, performs uh, um, two processes, one offline and uh, one uh, online. Uh, the geometric uh, offline processing uh, was uh, initiated uh, after the delivery of uh, a detailed 4D BIM model. When I'm saying 4D, I'm referring to the BIM model enhanced with uh, the time, uh, the tasks, and uh, the duration. Um, and uh, including the BIM model uh, in IFC format and uh, a detailed uh, construction uh, workflow uh, with uh, the workflows, uh, workflow tasks uh, linked to the different uh, BIM models. Uh, so uh, once the DTP, the digital twin platform, uh, had all the input files necessary for the operation of geometric uh, QC offline processing available, it sent, uh, it sent a notification to the geometric quality control tool that uh, a new project uh, and data uh, have been available for processing. The geometric quality control uh, tool 
queried uh, all the necessary informa information and um, uh, started uh, the offline processing. Um, after completion of that offline processing to identify for which uh, elements uh, quality, geometric quality controls uh, should be performed, uh, the, um, uh, and uh, after uploading the discount uh, uh, point clouds uh, on DTP, the geometric uh, quality control uh, was triggered again by the digital twin platform with a notification that the data for a new quality control tasks, task sorry, um, uh, was uh, available. Then the geometric uh, quality control tool started that online uh, processing uh, phase um, where actually this, this process uh, is a process of uh, matching and segmenting uh, the as-built data with uh, the as-plant uh, one finding uh, the as-built pose of its uh, element and uh, finally executing uh, the uh, active co uh, quality control instances. Uh, in both sites, uh, geometric uh, quality control, the geometric quality control service uh, was able to uh, generate uh, geometric quality control uh, instances from uh, as plant for the data and uh, compute uh, the necessary geometric quality control tolerances compliance. Uh, the validation activities of uh, um, the visual uh, quality control service um, were focused on performing the automated uh, visual inspection of uh, constructed elements. And uh, here, once the data uh, were sent from uh, uh, data, when I'm saying data, I'm referring to uh, the images, were sent uh, from VDPP to the digital twin platform. Uh, the later, the, the digital twin platform uh, sent the corresponding notification to the visual quality control service. And uh, the visual quality control uh, service queried for the new data and started the defect detection uh, process. Uh, we're actually applying deep learning uh, based uh, uh, algorithms. Um, defects uh, and um, defects uh, like uh, cracks were detected uh, on site on specific elements. Uh, okay, as depicted on the top right screenshot uh, from Digstar, um, actually Digstar is an application uh, that uh, has been developed, an AR application developed uh, to be running on HoloLens. Um, the, the, um, in this uh, uh, screenshot, uh, we see that uh, the, the, the pre-processing mode of Digstar, where actually the elements of uh, the BIM uh, model uh, were included uh, in uh, the visual quality control task, tasks for the selected project and uh, displayed in red. In this mode, um, the Digstar uh, operated actually as an image data capturing tool that uh, fits uh, VDPP and later on DTP, the Digital Twin Platform. Uh, here an image uh, was uh, captured uh, at runtime uh, on site uh, and was displayed uh, in the menu, which uh, offered uh, various uh, filters for pre processing uh, the image. Um, yeah, for on site visualization of quality control results as stored uh, and accessed uh, through uh, the digital twin platform, uh, Digstar was also demonstrated uh, in this uh, uh, image. Uh, you can see um, uh, a QC, a quality control result uh, that was checked uh, uh, on a specific site and uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's uh, the Murcia site uh, to be uh, cross-checked uh, about the validity of the result uh, by the surveyor on site. Uh, we're actually uh, in this mode upon selecti selecting uh, a, a specific quality control tag an overview of the quality control uh, result uh, is visualized and uh, this can be seen uh, in uh, that uh, screenshot. Moving back to uh, the work plat uh, workflow management uh, toolset, uh, I'll start uh, with uh, the PMS tool, the process modeling and simulation environment of the computer solution, where actually the uh, PMS validation activities performed uh, in both sites uh, involved uh, the import of uh, the original schedule 
um, it's uh, enrichment with resources, a safety and quality control task. Uh, it's optimization using uh, the schedule optimization uh, service. Uh, it's validation in the sandbox uh, experiment. And finally, uh, the export of uh, the enriched um, schedule, construction schedule, to uh, be uploaded uh, to the Digital Twin uh, platform uh, for subsequent execution of other um, Cogito tools. Here to expedite uh, and streamline the enrichment of uh, the original uh, construction uh, schedule with safety and quality control task, a feature for uh, automating uh, the pro this process um, was added uh, in the process modeling and simulation environment. And uh, a screenshot from uh, that uh, feature is being displayed on top of this uh, box. Um, the enriched uh, schedule was then uh, optimized, and uh, in uh, the screenshot uh, at the bottom, um, yeah, you can see um, uh, three optimizations conducted uh, in the Murthia site, uh, representing uh, different uh, objective uh, functions that were uh, investigated. The first focused uh, on, on minimizing uh, schedule uh, time. Uh, the second one uh, focused on minimizing uh, cost. And the third one uh, aimed at finding uh, a compromise between optimal costs and time. The selected scenario uh, was uh, then um, selected and um, finally validated uh, in uh, a simulation environment of uh, the PMS tool uh, called uh, Sandbox, Sandbox Experiment. The validated uh, models were then sent uh, to digital uh, twin platform to be later used uh, by uh, the work uh, order definition monitoring tool. Um, we're actually um, in uh, that we call WADM. Um, and um, in uh, WADM, uh, executable uh, work uh, processes uh, that we call work orders. Um, based on the PMS generated workflows imported from the digital twin platform were created, actual resources to tasks were assigned, um, SLAs with assigned KPIs and tasks were created, and overall work orders and KPIs were monitored through the world user interface. Uh, after uh, the successful uh, project uh, setup uh, on the on site of uh, WOD, the work orders were ready to get uh, executed using uh, WIRE. We uh, started uh, uh, the created the work orders and executed the task one by one. And uh, always uh, through WIRE, we were able to report the task progress. Um, we also tried to capturing uh, multimedia uh, during uh, the execution, uh, which data uh, were stored uh, in uh, WODM under specific uh, work orders. So, uh, count the times uh, that I mentioned, uh, not only me, but uh, also Tobias uh, and uh, Daniel, uh, the digital twin platform. Until they realized that uh, the orchestration of the of demonstration validation uh, of uh, the Cogito tools wouldn't have been successful without uh, a robust uh, middleware. Uh, and uh, actually, this middleware is essentially the Cogito Digital Twin platform, uh, providing core functionalities for project creation, um, user registration and authentication, uh, loading and validating data coming uh, from uh, different uh, various uh, data sources. Um, responding to data requests per performed by other Cogito uh, tools, to name but a few. So, uh, actually, uh, the digital uh, twin uh, platform uh, provided at first a central authentication and authorization system based uh, on Keycloak, an open source uh, implementation, uh, which uh, was actually responsible for uh, managing uh, the users and their roles by providing the necessary functionalities to the Cogito tools, such as uh, users registration, uh, password recovery, authentication, and authorization. Uh, the Digital Twin uh, uh, platform also provided uh, a web-based graphical um, user interface 
that allows uh, users uh, with uh, proper permissions to create a new project, assign uh, users and roles to users, and configure uh, all the roles and access policies. Uh, following uh, the project uh, creation process uh, and before uh, the construction uh, work starts, uh, the project managers uh, were uh, responsible for loading the as plant uh, uh, data and uh, trigger the execution of the knowledge graph generation process. And uh, for uh, this uh, uh, process, uh, the digital twin platform provided a web page that allowed the project manager to create a data collection job and upload uh, the necessary data. And I'm referring to the as plant data. Uh, the validation of the Cogito tools uh, on uh, both sides uh, was uh, strongly dependent uh, on, data on a data delivering system uh, designed uh, and implemented by the digital twin platform developers, developers um, where actually we follow an actor-based approach where each actor is a configurable uh, module. Uh, so the, data, the digital twin platform was responsible for hosting, uh, executing uh, these modules, to respond to data requests performed by the various Cogito tools. Uh, all the data uh, as built and as planned were stored uh, in the Digital Twin uh, platform, uh, cloud-based uh, data storage solution, including uh, graph, relational, and time series uh, databases. Um, Consider the, the, the process of uh, uh, generating uh, the knowledge graph. Um, the Digital Twin uh, platform uh, integrates a knowledge graph uh, generator component that uh, is executed and uh, was executed for both pilot sites. Uh, um, and uh, actually, uh, this execution includes uh, all the services for extract, transform, and uh, load. Um, necessary for making those data available to the digital uh, twin uh, platform and other applications, uh, validated uh, the uh, graph and uh, validating the graph, the result of this process, and uh, generating the corresponding uh, things description. Uh, apart from the knowledge graph uh, generation, a knowledge graph uh, interface uh, was provided uh, which uh, actually includes a browser to navigate the knowledge graph the, um, a validation tool uh, to validate uh, the RDF data, and um, uh, a Sparkle interface that allows uh, other applications such as the Digital Twin platform to perform queries and extract information. Uh, the list of uh, ontologies developed uh, for Cogito uh, was um, the backbone of uh, the whole solution uh and um the necessary for uh operating uh, this knowledge graph uh, generation process uh and i'd like to highlight the fact that the list of ontologies developed within the project can be found uh in the link uh, here okay um some highlights with regards to the extract uh, transform and load service that i mentioned before uh, the, extract, uh, the extraction transformation and loads, uh, load uh, process include uh, two uh, major components. Uh, the data quality uh, checking uh, um, tool uh, and uh, the um, BREP generation tool. The boundary uh, representation generation tool um, managed to generate for both pilot sites after processing the BIM model. A triangulated boundaries uh, representation of beam, uh, of beam elements. And this one and this one uh, uh, pictures illustrate uh, the triangulated uh, boundary representations generated uh, by the specific tool. Apart from that, uh, the geometric um, relation checker uh, component uh, was managed to check uh, classes uh, detected uh, among uh, beam, uh, beam elements. Uh, and uh, actually the output of this result could be uh, meaningful information that was sent back to the beam developers for uh, adding and modifying uh, the beam models accordingly. Okay, that's all for uh, um, the digital beam platform. And uh, closing uh, this uh, session, I'm happy to share um, 
some screenshots from uh, the digital uh, command center graphical user interface where uh, results from the various uh, cogito tools uh, sto as stored in the digital twin platform are gathered and um, uh, visualized to support a construction project uh, progress monitoring and uh, informative decision making uh, proving uh, somehow that the Cogito uh, ecosystem uh, was successfully uh, demonstrated in both uh, sites. Uh, here we, uh, I cherry-picked uh, some of the screenshots. Uh, all the data are available for people that have access to a specific uh, project um, based on uh, their um, uh, privacy uh, and um, access policies that, that various partners have on specific on the specific pilots where actually through uh, the DCC the users uh, get a detailed overview of the project uh, timeline with uh, as planned for the data uh, they were uh, able to uh, filter those data by work execution schedules as well as build uh, data showing uh, what has been constructed in specific uh, time frame Apart from that, uh, the, digital, uh, the digital command center offered uh, visual overlays uh, where actually um, report um, uh, on crucial, on crucial uh, project aspects, including work progress, uh, potential health and safety concerns, the quality of uh, work, uh, location uh, um, of uh, IoT data, where actually uh, IoT data for us are um, location data of uh, machinery and workers and uh, this means that the users can uh, monitor through uh, this uh, digital command center and manage the construction project with pre precision efficiency and uh, safety in mind uh, moving to uh, the next um, uh, session of our webinar I must uh, acknowledge that uh, such uh, remarkable results wouldn't have been uh, obtainable if uh, we had followed uh, a waterfall rather than uh, an agile project implementation uh, approach. So uh, our agile uh, methodology allowed us to learn uh, invaluable lessons, which uh, were sometimes articulated uh, as general concerns and uh, other times uh, as requests uh, for, uh, request for tool refinement. Committed uh, to sync the project uh, through to completion, then a consortium uh, managed uh, to implement uh, those refinements, uh, increasing uh, the maturity level of uh, the solutions uh, we offer. And uh, this slide actually concludes uh, the presentation of uh, this session. I think that uh, we can move to the next session, which is about the lessons learned uh, that uh, we received uh, from the pre-validation activities in both sides. So uh, I think that uh, Manuel will start uh, with the health and safety tools lessons learned. Thank you, Georgos. Okay, for the health and safety, um, we've, we we learned a lot. So yes, we see uh, many construction project lack digital tools for safety planning, but what was very important is to have a reliable digital effort. So we had a look from more views about our solutions, how easy and adaptive is the hardware itself and reliable. For example, the RTK tests showed us that it was very important to have a good signal and, and um, uh, a good view from the antennas, from the base to the rover. So we, we need a very stable solution that it is useful. And also how easy uh, is it for the workers to use that and what we can do with this, uh, with the data. So in general, um, if we have to change a working process, it's, um, 
it needs a lot of time and we have to prepare it uh, before the construction site a lot, a long time before. We have the risk detection alerting. Um, here we had some challenges that we were able to inform the workers, uh, for example, that they are on the hazard zone. Um, from the monitoring side, it was better to use the worker and the machines delivers all the data, but to inform the worker instantly, that was a big challenge for us in general for this uh, solution. And also, if we want to educate the people. So um, it is sometimes um, it's, it's less commonly used because we have a lot of work to do and the outcome is uh, not that much that uh, we, we, we expected or we, we hoped. But uh, to have the virtual safety that gives us a very big potential um, to monitor it on a new way because we have the data now instantly. For the quality control, we were, we, we were able to upload the images that was, uh, everything was successful. So the data uh, shared uh, to the BIM server, to the elements, but the, the handling was a little bit difficult because the data were very big and need a lot of time. For example, when we used the uh, HoloLens, the Microsoft HoloLens, um, we got some new challenges. We yes, it's uh, it's easier to document and make the picture, but then you have to uh, be sure uh, if you, uh, do you have an internet connection. Uh, for example, if you need a direct uh, upload, or is it saved locally? And after that, you have the work to do, or how many hours does the battery? work from the HoloLens and how many hours are the workers, um, is, it, is it okay to work because it's also heavy? So we, we, we switch uh, some, some uh, topics and uh, yes, it's, it's, it's a big advantage, but it's also some new challenges. And we, I think with Digital, we have uh, one, uh, one uh, very great possibility because um, as a construction site partner, um, we, we shared our BIM models from the rails and can learn how complex it is to, to write an algorithm that we have I think it was 80 or 85 percent correct uh, hit um, that we get some messages here is on failure. So that was very, very good. But um, yeah, we need also a lot of time and we see the hardware. So the, the mainstream hardware out of the box is not perfect for a construction site. But now we know uh, which screws um, we have to turn to uh, to make it useful for our cases. That was the quality control and the health and safety. And I think the next one will Tobias explain. Exactly, thank you. Thank you, Daniel. So we'll now move to workflow management bundle. Sorry, it's loading. So uh, within the workflow management components, uh, as mentioned before, we have PMS, Woodham, and Woya. So first of all, uh, a, a brief uh, feedback for PMS. So real-time optimization, visibility, and resource sharing capabilities are, are essential for enhancing PMS usability. And also the Excel style schedule visualization greatly improves the usability by allowing quick uh, assessment and updating of tasks um, attribute. And then both for Wodham and Wea, we had the chance to 
give feedback and continuously improve the, um, the, the tools. So uh, the user interface adjustments and enhance visibility of elements significantly, significantly sorry, improve the, the usability of the wooden uh, platform. And also, yeah, some uh, user interface improvement was were made uh, based on the user feedback that we that we gave, and this enhanced the usability and overall overall satisfaction of wooden tool. And with Woya, uh, an important work was dedicated to uh, work on the functionality so that the battery life was improved. Um, namely with continuous camera video audio features uh, that needed to be carefully optimized in order to avoid to drain the battery unnecessarily and yeah through the validation processes uh, we, we we could address uh, and fix some bugs and and glitches and to conclude uh, the session some feedback regarding the dcc uh, generally speaking it's a, a very powerful tool, visual, powerful visualization tool. Uh, and it was the same, uh, thanks to the user feedback, uh, it, had been, it has been improved by the, by the partners. So here are some key elements. Uh, so yeah, improvement has been made regarding the model alignment and handling large, uh, large database data sets, improve the real, uh, reliability and usability in diverse operational environments, uh, adapting UI elements based on user suggestions, enhanced visibility and usability, leading to a more intuitive interface. Uh, regular performance tuning and optimization efforts uh, are essential for maintaining high frame rates and smooth user experience. Providing comprehensive documentation and user support resources helps the user navigate the platform effectively and resolve uh, issues. Um, we also, well, the optimization of DCC for uh, web-based uh, environments, uh, definitely and significantly improved the, the performance and the user experience. Uh, streamlining communication and data exchange with the DTP enhances the integration and interoperability. Um, User-centric enhancements, such as search functionalities and health and safety, workflow management, IoT, and quality check overlays, streamline workflows, and improve uh, efficiency. And yeah, upgrading technology stack components enhances application performance and stability, aligning with industry standards and improving scalability. So I think with that, we close the, the presentation. I will give back the floor to Katrin for a very short Q&A session, I believe, in case we are behind schedule. <laughs> Yes, indeed. We are slightly behind schedule, but I would like to still take the opportunity to um, ask at least to each one of you a question which we received. So let's maybe start with a question for Yorgos. Um, how do unauthenticated users interact with the Cogito applications and what steps are involved in the registration process for new users? Thanks, thanks, Katrin. Um, actually, uh, just highlight the fact that uh, I think that I touched upon uh, that uh, function uh, within the project, uh, highlighting the fact that um, actually the access policies and um, who has access to which, which data and so on is managed by the Digital Twin platform where actually, as I mentioned uh, before, uh, the Digital Twin uh, platform uh, provides uh, a central authentication and authorization system, which is based on uh, Keyblock. So um, actually, uh, to um, familiarize uh, the end users on the process of creating uh, new projects, assign roles, uh, providing access to specific data sets of the whole project, uh, part of the deliverable that uh, presents um, the Digital Twin Hub platform, uh, if I remember correctly, it's a deliverable 7.10, explain, uh, explains in detail the process uh, to um, authentic, authenticate and authorize 
uh, end users and other applications that may be developed um, at the end of the project, for example, or anyone, while, and anyone else that would like to have access to the whole data set, consume data, and provide um, some insightful results, um, could be uh, um, found on that uh, specific deliverable. Uh, I'm repeating again that uh, uh, all deliverables uh, for, the, for the digital tools that have been developed are available uh, through uh, our website or uh, in uh, our community called the community in Zenodo. Okay, the following question is uh, one for Daniel. Um, Daniel, what specific methods were used to combine the 3D track alignments with 2D cross-section drawings within the Munich Pilot Tunnel project? Uh, in this case, it was <clears throat> automated design. Um, we used um, in Civil 3D the Dynamo, uh, and we used this for the visual programming. Yeah, that was our tools for that. Thank you. Then for Tobias, what is the significance of extending the model to a 900 meter section, and how does this extension contribute to the overall project? Uh, or analysis. Okay, thank you for, for the question. So, as mentioned at, at the beginning of the presentation, uh, the MUSA project was a linear one, very long, five kilometers um, tunnel. So we have we had more flexibility to decide and to select to pick the right validation area. But the validation area uh, was 300 meters wide or long. Um, so it was necessary to cover the five kilometers, but the 300 meters uh, validation area was a bit short. The idea was to prove that the overall Cogito environment could support bigger projects. So this is the reason why we decided to pro pro produce uh, a bigger model, a 900 meters long model, in order to show uh, the capabilities of the, of the overall Cogito solution. And then I have one last question, and I leave it to you to decide who would like to answer it. Um, how will the maintenance and further improvements of this suite of tools that you have developed in the frame of the project be handled and maintained um, yeah, after the end of the project? Actually, I can start and maybe uh, then uh, Daniel or Tobias would like if if they like if they would like uh, they can uh, provide further information. Uh, actually, uh, most of uh, the tools that uh, were developed uh, within the project uh, are not uh, being were not being developed from scratch. There are solutions that uh, uh, were developed from scratch and others that uh, actually are improvements of existing solutions. So we definitely uh, expressing uh, uh, the feedback from all uh, tool owners. I would say that uh, all of us would like to uh, further extend the functionalities uh, that have been provided uh, within the project. We'll keep maintaining, maintaining uh, the Cogito uh, ecosystem. For example, uh, the, I can say uh, uh, for, I, I can speak uh, for uh, the DCC that was developed by us. We will uh, keep um, maintaining uh, this uh, specific tool. And uh, I would like to highlight that uh, maybe there are some functionalities provided for uh, the construction phase of um, uh, infrastructure projects and uh, monitoring uh, all the aspects uh, relevant to it. Uh, but uh, on the other hand, there are other phases that we would like to investigate. And um, I, I can say that, uh, for example, for the Digital uh, Common Center, DCC, we are planning to extend uh, its uh, functionalities to cover uh, the operational phase as well. Not only on infrastructure projects, but also on uh, building projects, for example, um, assessing data that are retrieved uh, on, site, on the building and to try to uh, provide some um, insightful results. 
So overall, uh, I think that uh, all uh, partners and tool owners are very keen on keeping uh, the maintenance of the tools and uh, further uh, improving uh, their uh, provided functionalities. Highlighting the fact that Cogito uh, is um, a real project, a research uh, and innovation activity, which means that uh, although uh, initially we were targeting uh, in uh, lower TRLs, uh, at the end, uh, I believe that we managed uh, to achieve higher TRLs than the one that uh, we had promised based on the DOA. Many thanks for your reply. And a big thank you to the speakers and to the audience for attending today's webinar. I take the opportunity to remind you that in the coming days, the recording of today's session will be made available on the Build-Up platform and on our YouTube channel, together with the presentation slides. Build-Up has already webinar sessions uh, in the pipeline for April and May, so keep an eye on the Build-Up calendar of events and our social media for updates on these. Also, very important, be sure to register on the Build-Up website to be able to share and disseminate your own content and follow us on social media for updates. We wish you all a very pleasant end of the week. Thank you and goodbye.